Joining me now is Greg Marcel Dixon. He is one of the candidates hoping to unseat Clyburn. Greg, thank you so much for being with us here on BNC. Tell us why you've decided to run for Congress. Well, I saw that my district has had Congressman Clyburn as our representative for 30 years. And after 30 years, we are the sixth poorest district in the United States of America out of 435 districts total. Not only that, his district is majority black, 50 to 60%. Yet in his district, the average income is $41,000. But for the average white American and Asian American, it's fifty six dollars to $57,000. For black Americans, it's only $28,000. I see throughout this country that black Americans have lost 15 million acres of the 16 million that our grandparents and great grandparents were able to purchase. We're down to 1 million acres in land ownership. And yet legislatively, when I look at Congressman Clyburn's record, he hasn't done one single policy specifically for descendants of American slaves who make up the majority of his district. Why has this disparity existed for so long under the current leadership? Heirs properties when a person inherits land, but it was left without a will. What people don't know is that you get a share of that property, but you cannot get any federal grants for that property. You do not get any federal loans. You don't get any emergency relief for that property. You don't get any equity from that property. The most you can do is put a mobile home on that property. There are some other ways to finance it, but it's very difficult and it's very common. Historically speaking, what would happen is one person who may know the family, may have never met the family, may have never even seen the property, will sell their share. And then a judge, usually a racist judge, anti-black racist, would then allow that person, and it was usually a wealthy person, a wealthy white person, to buy out other family members' shares. So if there were 10 people living on that property, which is very common here, that's how I grew up. The judge would say, okay, $10,000, each member gets $1,000, get off, and the property might be worth $400,000. Because most Black Americans here live on Hare's property, and we don't get any equity from it, we essentially have no wealth, because most wealth in America comes from land ownership. White Americans, $48 million, trace their wealth to the Homestead Act, when Abraham Lincoln signed an order to give them 10% of this country's land. We were left out of that. We're still being really a landless people. So because we don't get any equity from our land due to the system of heirs' property, we have no wealth. And Congressman Clyburn has not written a piece of legislation to do anything about that. Well, this is just fascinating, and you can see how the disparity in particular communities is just amplified. You've come up with a bold plan for reparations. It's called Repair Black America <laughs> to Fix America. Tell us what your plan is and why now. So my plan for reparations is actually very similar to something that actually already happened in this country. Now, I'm running as a Democrat, but here's the funny thing. Rep Republicans have historically been the party that has done reparations. Uh, Republicans call themselves the party of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, the last piece of legislation he signed was Special Field Order 15. And that's from where we get the saying 40 acres and a mule. That was right here in coastal South Carolina where I live. It went from Charleston to all the Sea Islands, 30 miles inland, all the way down to Jacksonville, Florida. My family actually still has land from that. Most of it was taken back from people who were freed via the Emancipation Proclamation at the end of the Civil War, but some of us were able to keep it and purchase it. My plan is to bring back, first of all, the Free Men's Bureau was an agency of the government meant to take care of all of the needs of Black Americans, the descendants of American slaves, direct monetary payments for the exclusion and uh, uh, the discrimination that left us out of programs that put wealth in the pockets of other Americans, the Homestead Act, the GI Bill, the Social Security Act, the Wagner Act. So I have a plan there 
for the unpaid wages of slavery. Had my ancestors been paid for those wages, I would have inherited that wealth. The same we have white families. We have corporations that started during the days of slavery and inherit that wealth. I want to talk about the gun violence that has been plaguing black and brown communities. The suspected gunman who killed 10 people inside a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, mentioned Dylan Roof. We know that's the gunman convicted of murdering nine members of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston. We've been asking for action for a long time. What do you think Congress needs to do to protect black and brown communities from racist violence and gun attacks? Gun violence is awful. And the majority of gun violence is actually suicides. And I know you said black and brown, but being that this is the Black News Channel and my platform is Repair Black America to Fix America, if America is having issues with gun violence, then black America is probably going through it 10 times as much. So the act in Buffalo was an act of anti-black racism, something that has been specifically done to black Americans who are the sins of American slaves for the longest. And what we need is action similar to what Congress did when Asian Americans were going through hate crimes during COVID-19. Congressman Clyburn, because he's the majority whip, so he sets the legislative agenda. He put forth, uh, he led the spirit away to the COVID-19 hate it's implementations for everyone, but it was written specifically to protect Asian Americans from the hate crimes to which they have been subjected. We as black Americans, those who are descendants of American slaves, we have been subjected to hate crimes for centuries. Buffalo is just on the tail end of a long, long line of disgusting hate crimes. So we need an anti-black hate bill, which will make us a protected class. Now, overall, what needs to be done about gun violence? Well, one, we need to really address that there is a mental health aspect to gun violence because the majority of gun deaths are suicides. That's one. Two, we have to eliminate these ghost cells. If you buy a gun, you should have to register that gun and you are responsible for what happens with that gun. Three, there needs to be safe storage laws. And four, as I have on my website, Mark congress.com we need to have safe gun technology something i plan to provide to all gun owners free of charge where that gun only works if it is in your hand the truth of the matter is we already have 400 million guns in the united states of america even if someone was to try to confiscate them which i would not support it will be impossible to get that done because some would not comply and the ones that wouldn't we wouldn't know until it was too late my plan is that our areas, like schools, we do need to have armed security. And in schools that are majority, preferably other black security agents who keep our kids safe. But we also need to start screening our social media platforms. And I know this won't be popular with some people, but all communications. And when we are able to screen people making terroristic threats or threats of violence, because usually people talk about these things before they act on it. That needs to be flagged, that needs to be confiscated, and need to be thrown in prison and kept there. Well, Greg Marcel Dixon, we appreciate you so much, and thank you for being with us here today on BNC. Thank you so much, and I hope people are visit my website, marcelvacongress.com, to learn more about my platform. Thank you.